Um, my name is David Clossy, and I'm the executive director of a support group called SNAP, the Survivors Network of Those Abused by Priests. I'm from Seattle, or excuse me, from Seattle. I am uh, from St. Louis, uh, but just to make things confusing, SNAP is a Chicago-based group. And um, I think I can, I, I spent, I got here Monday, I've spent a couple of wonderful days meeting some of you in the room and all of you on stage, and I think I can confidently say that if there's one word that sums up why we're here today, it's the simple word prevention. Prevention. I've been with SNAP for 26 years, and I've literally talked to and heard from several thousand survivors. And if there's one common theme, I hear it sometimes in the first paragraph or the first minute of a conversation, or I might hear it at the end of a 45-minute talk, but I always hear this phrase. I just want to make sure that what happened to me doesn't happen to another kid. And somebody asked me, and I can't remember who, um, where does New Mexico fit in this ongoing crisis. And that is that New Mexico has been, I think, and continues to, to be the perfect storm um, for abuse. It's also the perfect, sorry, that what I would call the perfect secrecy storm um, for, for three simple reasons. First of all, there's been virtually no independent investigation into clergy sex crimes and cover-ups in New Mexico. Virtually none. In other states, you've got an attorney general who has launched an investigation and issued a report. In other states, you've got grand juries that have launched investigations and issued reports. No such action here by law enforcement. The second thing that's lacking here is that, as best I can tell at least, there's never been a single civil trial of a pedophile priest in the state of New Mexico. Not one. And no matter what you might think of our justice system, uh, imperfect though it may be, civil trials really reveal the truth, not just about those who commit, but more importantly, in some ways, about those who conceal this horror. I'm hoping somebody out there is asking themselves, well, what do we do now? The first is, please, ask your loved ones, ask your friends, did somebody hurt you as a kid? It's an incredibly awkward conversation to have incredibly awkward and intrusive, but have that conversation, please. Um, number two, uh, there's a website called bishopaccountability.org, Bishop Accountability. Raise your hand if you've seen this website before. Okay, it's a tremendous source of information. Um, here's how goofy and obsessive I am. I've printed out the list of perpetrator priests um, in Missouri, where I'm from and I keep it in the glove compartment of my car. Um, because if somebody says to me when the topic comes up, well, what about Father Albert? Did you, you know, I will literally pull that out of my glove compartment or out of my briefcase and find, find his name. Um, number three, I would encourage you uh, to go to our website, snapnetwork.org, snapnetwork.org. The purpose of our group, we're a, um, both a support and advocacy group been around 27 years, completely nonprofit, completely independent of any church body. Um, we had a terrific support group meeting here last night. Um, we plan on holding them more regularly in New Mexico. It's just a safe, welcoming, private place where you can share your story, be believed, be supported, and move closer towards recovery. Um, if you register on our website, which means just giving us your email address, you will hear about other events that we're doing. Um, it's, again, the website is snapnetwork.org. And my final bit of advice, before we hear a little bit more about addictions, my final bit of advice to you, or my plea to you, would be contact your lawmakers and tell them to end this incredibly archaic, arbitrary, predator-friendly statute of limitations that slams the courthouse door on the people like the folks you've just heard from. You know, let's be brutally honest. Kids are safest when predators are jailed, right? 
But the biggest impediment to that is the, these laws that say you have X number of years from the time you turn 18 or X number of years from the time you turn 21. Um, and it is heartbreaking for a survivor to summon the courage and strength to come forward and walk into the police station or walk into the DA's office only to be told, wow, if you'd have just gotten here six months sooner or six years sooner, why in the world do we have a legal system that encourages those who commit and conceal child sex crimes to destroy evidence and intimidate witnesses and uh, stonewall law enforcement uh, and keep it under wraps, right, for just a couple more years and then we'll be home free. That's what this crazy statute of limitations does and it happens civilly and it happens criminally. Um, and, that, and it enables church officials to say, well, we just don't know who to believe. We can't really tell who to believe. Well, that's what our justice system is, imperfect as it, as it may be. That's what our justice system does, right? But only if you can get in the courthouse door. And that only happens when these awful statutes of limitations are repealed. The good news is that the, Martin Luther King said, um, the moral arc of the universe is long, sorry, but it bends towards justice. And it is bending towards justice. More and more lawmakers all across the country are eliminating or extending these statutes of limitations. And it's got to happen here. Um, so please, just contact your lawmakers and, and say, why do we have this arbitrary, archaic time limit that enables predators to silence their victims just long enough so they can go out and victimize more kids?